Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and we are talking about bees because bees are very important for us and for the environment. And I thought, could we help them in some way with electronics? Let's try it. I myself actually want to keep bees, so I have taken some courses and I haven't got any beehives yet, but I will. And I thought I maybe could do some electronic stuff around those bees. And the first thing that I learned in the course is how endangered bees are, especially because there are pests that can really harm any beehive in the world. For example, the Varroa mite. With this project, we're trying to find a bit better solution to combat these. Let's keep the scientific beekeeping stuff simple. The Varroa mite is a pest that is actually sucking on bees blood. So they are directly harming the bees. And if the population of Varroa mites and pretty much every beehive in the world has those mites gets too large, then the hive can die. So you as the beekeeper have to monitor the population of mites and you also have to take measures against them. One of those measures that you can take is very different in different parts of the world but where I live the usual method is to use uh, oxal acid which has to be evaporated inside the hive that kills the mites and you have to time it right. Because we don't have much time to show how the actual application is done and I don't have a beehive here, I have linked a lot of videos and blog posts and stuff around this topic on the Element 14 community. And you can also check out designs that people have already done that are active beekeepers. So that's really cool to compare the different solutions that people have found. What we are trying to do in this video is we're taking a design from the commercial offerings and try to convert it to a portable or truly portable solution. I use the term truly portable because in theory all the solutions that are on the market are portable. Usually they have some PID heating controller, a heating element and they run off 240 volts AC. And because beehives usually are not that close to the house, they're usually out in the fields, that means people have to find a way to power them. They use generators, battery packs uh, with voltage converters and stuff and this all makes for a really bulky big setup. And usually the people that use these big uh, devices have a lot of beehives and I mean a lot. These are usually people who do beekeeping for a living. But if you're just a hobbyist you may have just two or three uh, beehives and you don't need the big thing that costs multiple hundred of euros and it's also not like really portable. So I thought could I make a device that is smaller, does the job but has enough battery power for like one or two hives? Let's find out how hard that really is and give it a go. Okay so how do these things work? Basically oxal acid is looking like damp salt and if you heat it up then the water that is bound in it sublimates and then basically it does make steam and smoke and this is how the oxal acid actually gets transported into the hive. So you have to heat it up usually to um, 109 to 150 degrees Celsius that's usually the temperature range the devices work at and I thought hmm sounds like the temperature range of a 3D printer so maybe I can use the heating cartridge of a hot end a thermistor that I would usually use on a 3D printer, uh, an Arduino based control board, I'm gonna make one myself and then I have to do some custom machining to make the device where you actually fill in the acid and that gets heat up. So I think we should start with a PCB design, let's hop over to KiCad. Welcome to my computer and KiCad. This is the full schematic of all the stuff that's going on in here. Not that complicated. So this is the microcontroller. In that case, ESP32S2, you can use any microcontroller for that as long as it can do PWM and it has analog inputs. That's the crucial thing. This one is not famous for having good analog inputs, but it has working ones. 
So at least if you have analog inputs, it's all gonna be fine. This is my input side for the power. This is our voltage regulator. We have some LEDs and I also have another LED on here directly connected at the heater circuit, which also brings us to the heater circuit. That means if there is any power on here, then this will light up, which means this indicates for me in development that the heater is active in practice, even though my code may don't think so. And here is my Fermista design that I based on the RAMS 1.4 schematic. Here is the finished board design. You can see these three batteries are now 18650 cells, so you can plug them in on the back side. And here is a big portion that has no copper infill, and it is meant to connect to the milled or turned uh, aluminium part with some screws. and. This is deliberately cut out because FR4, which is the fiberglass that PCBs are made out of, is a really good insulator. So I use this to insulate my electronics from the heat of this device. So double usage for the PCB in that case. And the case around this all is separated with a bit of Captain tape, so it won't get damaged by the heat too much. This is the 3D design. So you can see the indicator LEDs. Here's the MOSFET that will lay down flat in the final assembly. This is the part that I had to change. After the fact, here are the shot key diodes, really important. And this is where the batteries will plug in. I've sent this all to Isla and they are generously manufacturing the boards for me so I can get this project ready in time. For this project we need a few more custom made parts. I've got some stock of aircraft aluminum and I'm gonna fabricate that on my little lathe here and use like drills and files and stuff to make the heating chamber. I also need to make a plug for the heating chamber with a hole inside where the actual vapor can escape and I have to seal that with o-rings or something like that. I'm not that well versed in mechanical stuff but I Give it a try. A lot of machining later I have some parts. This is the plug that goes into the device and it has a little rim inside here and this is uh, measured to be the actual amount of oxal acid that you have to put in. So you basically put your stuff that you want to evaporate in here, then put the unit on top and then it seals shut with this o-ring and this other uh, seal here. And that should allow us to have like a convenient way to load it without having to touch the actual stuff. Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays, you can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. So what happens if we plug the device in? Nothing, because the code is missing. Let's look at the code. And by the way, we also only have the highlights of each section in this video. If you want to see the full unabbreviated sections like the code and the CAD and stuff, go to the Element 14 community and also you can download all those files there. So maybe you want to build your own version. Welcome again to my computer and this time the Arduino IDE. So what do we actually have to do for this project? We are gonna control a heater depending on a temperature reading that we're doing with a firm vista. 
All we do is start up the device, heat it up. When we know we have reached the device, shut off the heater and warn in case it is still hot. And that is the basic code. Super simple user interface, no settings and stuff. And you can also update it over USB because we have that exposed. And also, if you plug in the USB cord, then the device is active all the time. So you don't have to keep the button pressed. I think that's pretty handy for um, preheating. So you just keep it plugged in for preheat. And then once you are uh, ready to go, you unplug it, keep the button pressed, and then do your Varroa mite extermination. As you may notice, the parameters that I have for the Fermister inside there are just guesstimations. That's because I don't actually know the values. I have salvaged those from a 3D printer hotend. So I think the beta coefficient value is wrong because it like drifts away from the actual measurements that I can take during heat up. But hey, that's good enough to make it hot and then not too hot. We can just uh, adjust with some software tweaks by like subtracting a value or just estimating the value that we have to reach a bit higher and confirming that with a calibrated temperature measurement. So yeah, that's the downsides of fumbling it somehow. Anyway, I think we have a unit together. Let's 3D print a case for it uh, because PLA and PTG won't stand up to the heat. I'm using my MX engineering resin, of course, uh, which is also not a high temperature resin, but I think it's high enough for the short periods of time that we're exposing it to the heat. Important safety warning, I am not actually using the real chemical for my tests. I'm using a liquid that is glycerin and deionized water, which together is basically smoke liquid that you would use for smoking machines in video production or in discotheques, or I think it's the same liquid that makes the smoke in electrical cigarettes. So there is always a danger with heating up stuff, especially beyond a melting or evaporation point. So don't try this at home. And I'm using safety precautions so I won't burn myself and so I won't inhale any of the smoke. And no, I'm not using the real chemicals. I'm just using replacements. Pretty often in life you have to consult the debugging ducky, explain it to it and maybe it gives you the right ideas where's the error in your code. But this time it's not about code, it's about thermal mass. So this device is fully portable. It has three 18650 LiPos inside. Those have 12 volts, but that is not enough for that big hunk of metal over there. Too late in the process, I have looked at designs that other people have made in the beekeeping community and turns out they all use a lot higher voltage and a lot less thermal mass. So usually 18 volts to 24 volt systems, uh, lawnmower batteries basically, and they all use a lot less uh, aluminium blocks, like a lot smaller designs. So this is basically too much thermal mass for too little power. The electronic regulation works pretty good. I think the user interface is a bit more simple because it's just if you press the button it heats up, gets to the temperature and when it has reached it, it shuts down. So all you have to remember is press the button or don't. And you can always exit it, all the settings via the USB port. This would need a second revision to be useful and that's the usual pro uh, process in R&D. You build something, you learn something, you build again. At least we have learned some machining, some coding, reading from misters and controlling heaters, 
and next time we may, may be able to make a functioning version. Maybe you have some project ideas to help the bees or the environment. Share them on the Element 14 community. I'm also linking there the bonus videos for the CAD and code segment for this video, all the code CAD and files for this project so you can build your own version and also I'm linking blog posts and interesting stuff around uh, these DIY devices that I found around the internet. So you can read up there and watch some interesting videos. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.